Hi there. So I um, will be talking to you today about how to integrate React with D3. Uh, my name is Finfit Simons and I've been doing this for several years now. And I think I have, um, I've tried many different approaches and I think I've found the best way. And I'd like to share that with you today. In, and hopefully it will help you. <laughs> Um, so a bit about myself, I, um, I have a project called Number Picture, which um, has the aim of discovering and ranking all the possible charts that you can get. Um, currently we've got more than 450 types um, of charts, uh, and this is up to three visual variables per chart, so there are many more, but that's those are the constraints we set on ourselves. Um, and what I wanted to do was I wanted to be able to um, make the charts more accessible by enabling people to, to use them um, you know, by, by writing code. They could visualize their data and use these charts. Um, so I started out considering how I would go about um, creating 450 chart templates for people to use and um, this is quite a challenge obviously because um, because it you know it could take years to do but um, in order to do it I needed to I needed to think about a I couldn't use an existing charting library because no charting library in existence has 450 charts <laughs> um, so I needed to think about it in a different way and this is a quote that comes from uh, Mike Bostock, the guy who made D3. He used this quote um, that elegant design requires us to think about a theory of graphics, not of charts. And this is the, the, what um, informs his approach to D3 and the way it is designed. So this is very similar to what I, well, it's exactly what I needed for my, um, to make my charts. For a number picture. So um, I looked around to see what um, what existing libraries there were available at the time um, and the vast majority were charting libraries um, but obviously I didn't need a charting library I needed something more low, low level and when I talk about graphics I'm talking about um, uh, graphic graphics in terms of um, shapes and symbols and what they mean not about computer graphics you know I'm talking about the um, graphic design more and how it can be applied to data visualization so the only graphics libraries I found were D3 uh, which has a, an imperative API so it's going to um, it's going to take me years to, to write 450 charts and also um, it's, it can tend to be a bit um, uh, messy, not messy, but um, you can very easily run, in, uh, run into a situation where you have lots of spaghetti code and that sort of thing. So I knew from the beginning that D3 wasn't going to be uh, good for what I was doing. Um, and while I was um, making, yeah, while I was on the journey to finding the solution, um, a library called VX um, appeared and it's, uh, it was very close to what I needed but the only problem was that it wasn't animated. Um, yeah, so, so basically I um, set out to make my own library and um, I'm going to take you through the the approach, the approach that I found to be the best way after several iterations. Um, so let's firstly look at what D3 and React actually are and what they're good at. I mean, D3 is very um, D3 is multiple things, um, but in my opinion, where D3 really uh, really shines is um, when taking abstract data and mapping it to the visual realm, you know. Um, if you let D3 interact with the DOM, 
then you're in a situation where you're limited to only um, visualizing data in the browser. You can't do server-side rendering. You can't do uh, you can't use it on in React Native, for example, or you know in a native environment, mobile environment, and you also um, yeah. So, but it is very good at doing high performance animations in the DOM. Um, and React, on the other hand, uh, is is a library that is not coupled with the, with the DOM necessarily, but it is very um, yeah. So, and it is very good at declaratively controlling the DOM or the other environments that you use it in, like like React Native. Or um, yeah, uh, so and it also has um, many positive design attributes. Um, so you're you're able to build highly modularized applications. You can you have abstraction, decoupling, etc. Lots of good things, which I'm sure uh, you guys are already aware of. <laughs> so I won't go into. Too, too much detail. Um, so the criteria I set out with when I when I started to make my library was that um, firstly it should be animated, um, it should have uh, high performance, it should be the code inside the library should be should be elegant and not feel like a hack. And before I get to the fourth criteria I want to take a quick detour Criterium, and um, and talk to you about how I believe the optimal way is to um, to break charts up into their components or their elements. And um, I mean, obviously, the data is separate by by, by nature. Um, but I think the actual chart it's it's a logical way to um, to separate it into a layout and into, into nodes. So the layout performs um, uh, calculations in order to, to lay out the shapes on the page and, um, and position them and tell you the, their attributes, like where the, uh, their size, their angle, etc. But it actually doesn't do any rendering itself. And then the layout um, maps the data to to nodes which are uh, in charge of rendering the actual shapes on the page and I think this is a, a clever approach to take because uh, each each um, each part of the visualization can be interchanged with other parts so for example you can use um, you can use different data sets with the same layout and node you can also um, use the same data set and uh, the same nodes, but switch the layouts, and then you can also have the same data layout, but switch the nodes shapes. So, for example, you have a stack with bars or a stack with areas. And so, this brings me to my fourth cri criterion that I think is important, and that is uh, decoupling the elements of the chart. So. As I said, I went through many uh, iterations and different approaches and everything I found online, someone was saying this is the best way and the only way that you can um, inter integrate React with D3. Um, but they don't, they never like showed you alternatives, so I had to manually go and attempt each one. And in the end, the one that I found to be the, mo uh, the best in terms of all these criteria uh, was the following. So, um, so on the left you can see uh, we have um, the layout component and we at the bottom we have the node component and what happens in the layout is that it receives um, well on the right you can see how you use it so it receives uh, data as a prop and then on the left in the in the render method it will take that data and it will um, uh, enrich the data using a D3 layout, for example, like a pack or a stack or a um, 
tree, tree map, etc. All the all the layouts that you get in D3 can be applied here. So it will enrich the data and add extra properties to each datum. Like if it's a pie layout, it will add start and end angles to each datum. And then what it does is it passes that um, it passes that enriched data to the children. Um, it, uh, the children which is a function so it uses um, a render prop um, pattern and passes the each each tick of the animation um, it passes the enriched um, interpolated styles to the children um, render prop and then the nodes at the bottom and sorry I forgot to mention that we're using react motion transition motion so, and then the nodes, what happens at the bottom is the, the nodes are just stateless components that uh, take some inputs and render something to the screen. So, you can see on the right, you have the layout, you just pass the data, the data gets enriched and passed to the render prop, uh, which happens to be the children prop, and then that gets mapped to to a bunch of nodes on the screen. And then, uh, okay, so let me tell you why I think this is the, be the best approach. So firstly, the nodes are stateless components. Um, uh, secondly, the layout is only recalculated once each time the data set changes, each time it receives new data. And the um, React Motion or React Transition, transition Group version 2, it tweens this, well, it interpolates this new data um, in a very simple way. So it's just interpolating uh, raw values. It's not like doing any transformations each, uh, each tick. And each tick, it passes the um, intermediate interpolated data to the render prop, and the stateless children, they each render efficiently each time. So it meets all the criteria. It's animated, performant, elegant, and decoupled. So here it is. Here's a diagram of what happens. So you have your data. The data comes in. You don't change the data. You don't interpolate the data at all. You just literally pass it to your layout. The layout um, recalculates once only, which, and then, um, after it's calc uh, the layout has calculated, you perform a simple interpolation just from one set of numbers to another, one, one, uh, yep, one array of numbers to another. So you're not doing any transformations in the middle, each, uh, each, each tick. And then the uh, interpolated data gets passed to the stateless nodes, which are rendered to the screen. So in this way, we're, uh, we, we have the lowest time complexity and it means it's the best way to, um, to separate and construct a chart. So using this approach, I built a, um, a library which is called numberpicture.js um, and what it is, is it's, it's a whole lot of low-level building blocks for constructing animated visualizations and um, on the left you can see these are the, the, the shapes and uh, yeah shapes and elements that I've um, implemented so far you have um, you have simple shapes like uh, circles rectangles uh, lines and text and then you also have uh, generated shapes that use generally use uh, d3 generators like arcs, um, areas, uh, symbols, and ribbons, and area, ra radial areas, etc. And then on the right we have the layouts. So these are all um, declarative. Well, well, these are all components that are um, that use D3 layouts to. Um, yeah, if that makes sense. So basically. Um, the way I showed you previously, you, you have your, let me show you, so on the left, 
you, in the layout you, you use the d3 layout function so that um, that is here sorry um, so the layouts each use a different layout function from d3 and they map that enriched data to to the render prop and the the children that you pass it so um, let me show you an example um, here we have a a pie chart and you what you do is you import the components from number picture SVG pie and, and arc um, the SVG uh, literally just renders an SVG um, element um, and then the, the pie layout takes some some data and the value and ID um, props you see those are the uh, accessor methods that you that the d3 layout uses to to calculate the layout and then you just have an animate uh, prop which will flag which tells it to be animated or not and then in the children prop is a function that that receives a an array of nodes and then maps them to an array of uh, react elements that get rendered on the page so here we're mapping them to arc elements uh, yeah arc uh, we're using the arc component and uh, the the API is very is is designed to be um, as close to the API as D3 and native SVG as possible, and you just um, pass the props that you want. So here we're passing start angle and end angle, and the the rest are hard coded static props. And you see on the right what you've got is a pie chart, and it's animated, so each time the data changes, it will um, it will tween to a new um, a new state. And out of the box, this even works on React Native because we're not interacting directly with the DOM, and we're using component injection. So what this means is, you see here on uh, line four and further down. In three places where in the comments it says here um, we're injecting the component that needs to get rendered to the screen so the, the SVG uh, uses the SVG component uses the Re react native SVG component to render um, the, the Pi layout uses um, the react native SVG group um, uh, component and the arc uses the path component so um, almost out of the box it works with react native which is pretty cool and um, the roadmap for where i see it, see this going is that to firstly i want to i want to improve the react native support because there are some things that are not um, totally compliant with uh, native svg and uh, there are some workarounds that need to be made in the, in the library. Secondly, um, I want to add uh, extras like legends, tooltips, axes, patterns, gradients. And, um, and lastly, uh, to add canvas support for um, performance reasons and also for whoever wants to use it on canvas. I mean, it's good to have the, uh, the possibility. And um, yeah, any any help uh, if uh, if anyone is interested in helping with this getting to these goals, it would be very welcome. And that's it from me. Um, if you like to uh, to try Number Picture out, you can install it using the next tag uh, from MBM. And here are several links to to anything everything that I mentioned in this talk and that's from me thank you very much um, yeah